Hey guys, Johnny here with NitroPlanes.com. Thanks for joining us on the second installment of our FPV series. If you hadn't had a chance to check out part one, which talks about safety and uh, which aircraft or gra which ground vehicle to choose, make sure you guys do check that out. Special thanks to Patrick over at uh, CSFPV. If you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead and log on to CSFPV. Uh, he's got all kinds of really cool apparel uh, in the FPV field, whether you're into fixed wing, multi-rotor, uh, and just general RC. He's got some pretty cool shirts, so go ahead and check that out. And uh, make sure you, t you uh, stay tuned towards the end of the video where I'm going to show you guys how you can win a free t-shirt from CSFPV. All right, so the second part of this series, we're going to talk about uh, video frequencies and which one's the right one for me to choose and I'll get into details about the pros and cons of each frequency. Uh, we'll get into details about antennas and milliwatts and things like that. The second half of this series is going to be talking about placement and setting up your rig. So let's go ahead and jump right on into the FPV equipment. Now before I get into each one of the frequencies I do want to touch real quick on display device. Choosing your display device will also help you determine which frequency to go with. For example, I've got a set of Fat Shark uh, video goggles here. This is the Fat Shark Predator goggles. They come with a 5.8 gigahertz video receiver built into the goggles. Now, this could allow you to have a nice compact ground station and you can run your video transmitter of the same frequency right into your goggles. However, you're not limited to just that frequency. These goggles, along with all the other Fat Shark goggles, allow you to input uh, actual three and a half millimeter video input into the actual goggles from, say, an uh, external receiver, such as this one. This is in the 5.8 gigahertz, or this one in the 1.2 gigahertz, and 2.4, so on and so forth. Getting into a little bit higher end goggles, for example, the Dominators. The Dominators have a modular system. So this means you can choose a video receiver that fits you. Mine, for example, right now, I've got the 1.3 gigahertz receiver module already into my goggles, but you can also choose the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz receivers to go with your goggles. All right, quick note about goggles. Um, these are the Dominator goggles. They have different specs than, say, the Predator or the Teleporter. There's, there's a whole bunch of different levels of goggles you can get. I personally choose the Dominators because they have the best optics and they're a modular system. So you can add the different frequencies in there in and out very easily. You can also add head tracking to them uh, if you so choose to. They also, in my opinion, have the best image quality out of all the different goggles that I've used. I will note that there is a new Dominator HD and a Dominator uh, version 2 coming out, so look out for those. As far as the Predators, Predators are a great goggle for an all-in-one solution. They come as a kit with the receiver already built in. These are the version 2, so they don't have the head tracker built in, but I believe the newer Predators have a head tracker already built in. Uh, getting into the optics, the optics are okay. In my opinion, they feel like a big screen TV, a little bit farther away and less immersive than the Dominators, but overall, they're a great system. These do run on 2 or 3S and have the option to output the video or input a video from a different uh, receiver and also throw the video onto a different monitor if you want a co-pilot or something to get into. If you have vision problems and uh, goggles just don't fit you or maybe you get motion sickness or things like that um, goggles may not be your best bet so in that case you'll want to go into a ground station setup for example i've got my ground station here set up with a 10 inch monitor and my receiver uh I, I, my receiver setup I have in here is also modular. For me, all I have to do is disconnect the power plug and disconnect the video input and switch out to a different frequency in there. Another thing that I've also done in my ground station, which you can choose to do if you want to use, uh, if you want to switch between a monitor and goggles, I've put a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter to repeat the same signal that my other frequency is transmitting so I can slip my goggles on for that more immersive feel. Going into your monitors, uh, make sure that your monitor does not blue screen. Uh, specifically ask the manufacturer or look for it in the specs. If you have a monitor that blue screens, what's gonna happen is if you're flying out and your video starts to degrade, the monitor tries to uh, keep that fuzzy and that snowy picture uh, off of the view. So it goes into a blue screen, uh, a solid blue screen, or it could be black. This is very bad when you're flying FPV. Most of the times when you're flying and your video gets a little bit scratchy or uh, gets a little bit uh, uh, wavy or whatnot, 
the video usually comes back if you just fly through it. So if you're flying out and you're flying, I would rather prefer flying through static than flying through a completely blue screen. So choosing your display device will help you in making a better determination on which video frequency should I go with. Now we'll get into the details and the variables of each frequency. Just a quick note, if you guys want a little bit more information on my ground station and how I built it, uh, you can go ahead and click on my ground station and it'll take you to the link with my video and the build log of my ground station. So the main four frequencies used in FPV is 900 megahertz, 1.3 slash 1.2, and I'll touch on that as well, 